So you may have noticed that I didn't really post a whole lot in January. You would have been perfectly reasonable to assume that I was just taking the month off from content creation. A lot of people do since YouTube slows down a bit after December. Also, my upload schedule hasn't been the most consistent or frequent in a while, but I had intentions of doing better in that department. Unfortunately, those hopes didn't materialize for a number of factors. A bunch of stuff rapidly and drastically changed in my personal life, not least of which was the fact that I lost my job. And that led directly to the next contributing factor and reason for this video, Outer Wilds. You see, after I had told some of my friends that I'd been laid off, one of them decided to gift me the game as a little pick-me-up. Up to this point, I thought for sure my primary love language was acts of service, but receiving this gift really did help me feel better about what I was going through. Then again, maybe giving me a video game with the objective of helping me feel better counts as an act of service? I probably need to actually read more about how love languages work anyway. Regardless, I practically nosedived into this game. Probably not the healthiest coping mechanism, but it gave me something new to focus on, which I desperately needed. I have a tendency, like I imagine most humans do, to just kind of stick to what's familiar and what's routine. The issue is, that ends up leaving you in a rut, and so I was feeling stuck. Not just from my work with being laid off, but even in video games. Something that has historically brought me fun and good feelings. While I did play Portal with RTX when it was released, and downloaded Sims 4 when it was made free to play this past year, for most of the past two years, I've just played Minecraft. Even on my phone, I still have Animal Crossing Pocket Camp installed, but I haven't played it in earnest for months. It probably doesn't help that I'm very picky about what types of games I'll play. The Portal series is the closest I choose to get to first-person shooters these days, and I'm very much one of those Sims players who picks up the game for a fully immersed three days to a week before putting it back down again for a week, a month, or more. I remember briefly trying Myst as a teenager, but the puzzles were a bit too opaque for me to get engaged. Even after I would look at some walkthroughs to get some hints, I would still feel completely confused. But that wasn't the way it was with Outer Wilds. Maybe it was the trappings of it being a space adventure, and I do love space. So maybe that, in combination with the fact that I'm a bit older now, made me more patient with the puzzles? Granted, I did end up looking up walkthroughs a few times when I got stuck, because I wasn't sure if I was missing something because I do have a tendency to be very oblivious. Turns out I wasn't missing anything per se, I just needed to play more of the game and have a bit of patience. I don't think the few things I looked up drastically took away from my experience of the game, but I genuinely believe you'll get the most from Outer Wilds if you can avoid consulting walkthroughs and just have the patience to explore and investigate everything thoroughly. And even after I quote-unquote finished the game, I continued to play it for the better part of January, digging deeper, trying to work my way through the achievements listed on Steam. The thing is, I didn't just play Outer Wilds. I fully, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I definitely can't just chalk that up to the game's content. It's also the way I got it, the way it was presented to me. A friend cared about me and wanted to help me feel better, so she gave it as a gift. Of course, the friend in question also confessed later that part of why she gave me the game was so that we could talk about it. But as far as ulterior motives go, that's pretty benign. I am just ever so slightly cynical by nature, so part of my brain usually expects ulterior motives. But since my friend and I appear to have very similar tastes in video games, and again, it was a gift, I feel I have absolutely zero things to complain about. Unfortunately, I now can appreciate why my friend was so eager to be able to talk to me about the game. The community is a bit small. While I have been able to find some fan fictions and fan art that expand on ideas like, what if we could take the characters with us to show them stuff? It's not the volume I'm used to with fandoms like Portal, and if we're not limiting ourselves to just the medium of video games, Star Trek. Realistically, I guess that makes sense, Star Trek has had since the 60s to gather enthusiastic fans, with multiple television series, movies, books, comics, and even video games. The Portal series also has two games, with the first released in 2007 and the second in 2011. Not to mention the series ties to one of Valve's other franchises, Half-Life. Meanwhile, Outer Wilds has one video game and hasn't been available for nearly as long. 2019 was just four years ago. 
But as much as I understand all this, it still makes things difficult. Because now my brain wants to make videos about Outer Wilds. And y'all didn't subscribe for Outer Wilds, y'all subscribed for Minecraft. And so now I'm faced with a slight conundrum. I have things I want to talk about with Outer Wilds, but I don't think I have enough ideas to make a completely new channel. So I asked myself, do I not make the videos and risk never sharing my thoughts, causing them to endlessly float around in my head? Or do I make the videos and risk alienating my viewers? Am I overthinking this? Probably. It's what I tend to do, as my Minecraft lore series plainly shows. In fact, that's part of why I still haven't released the Diamond Door video. I'm still a little unsure how I want to handle it. While I think it's usually an exaggeration to describe a video game as life-changing, there was at least one line in Outer Wilds that I think will stay with me for a while, especially when I face situations like this where I'm very tempted to allow my analysis paralysis to stop me from making a decision. And a quick warning, while I'm omitting in what context this line occurs and which character this line is attributed to, some may find it a bit spoilery, so consider yourself warned. It's tempting to linger in this moment, while every possibility still exists, but unless they are collapsed by an observer, they will never be more than possibilities. To the friend who gave me this game, thank you for exposing me to such a succinct argument against my procrastination tendencies, though I do feel slightly attacked. So, with that in mind, I decided that, at the very least, I should write up the scripts for what I would like to say as though I were going to go through with making the videos. At the very least, it will help me get my thoughts out of my brain, and it'll give me additional practice with writing up scripts, which is probably helpful for my Minecraft content anyway. But maybe I'll even be able to use the scripts to make videos at a later time. If not this channel, then maybe another one. The Diamond Door video is next on my agenda. Until next time, take care.